Hey there, I have another video for you on how to create wealth, abundance and freedom in your life. And today I'm talking about the Rumpelstiltskin effect. Hey there, Margarita here, conscious mindset coach and light worker from Pitbull and founder and creator of the Wealth Consciousness Movement. And today I have another tip for you on how to create wealth, abundance and freedom in your life. And this time I'm talking about the Rumpelstiltskin effect. What on earth is that? Okay, so if you know anything about the Rumpelstiltskin story, I'll give you a brief synopsis. Uh, it was back in the days of the, the kings and the queens, and there was a local miller who had an audience with the king and he wanted to impress the king. So he told the king, knowing that the king loved gold, he told the king that his daughter could spin straw into gold. Well, this did impress the king and the king called for his daughter. Now, when his daughter arrived at the palace, he locked the daughter up in a dungeon with a pile of straw and a spinning wheel and said, if you do not spin all of that straw into gold by the morning, your life is forfeit. I am going to kill you. So the, the miller's daughter, who was just beside herself, of course, could not spin the straw into gold, had no idea what to do. She was sitting there sobbing in the dungeon. This strange little man appeared and said, little girl, why do you cry? And she told him. And he said, if I spin this straw into gold for you, what will you offer me? And she said, I have this ring. So um, the little man said, okay, deal spun the straw into gold. She gives him the ring. He disappears. The king comes in the next morning. Oh, oh my God. Look at all this gold. He is absolutely beside himself. Instead of the little girl go, however, he, he puts her in another dungeon. Guess what? Another pile of straw, spinning wheel. Off you go. Otherwise you're dead in the morning. So, um, She's again sobbing beside herself. The little elf, the little man appears and says, what will you offer me for spinning the straw into gold? And she goes, I have this necklace. You can have this necklace. Yeah, okay, I can do that. So deal's done. Got straw, gold. King comes in, goes, oh, oh my word. He is just salivating by now at all this gold that has come from the straw and goes a third time. Right locks the girl in the dungeon and says, this time, if you spin all this straw into gold, then um, I will make you my queen. You will be my wife because you are so valuable to have within my palace, palace as my possession. But if you don't, yeah, I'm going to kill you. Um, your life will be forfeit. So again, she's sobbing. The little man appears and she goes, oh, please, please, please help me spin this straw into gold. And he says, what will you give me? And she goes, I have nothing left to offer. I, I've given you my ring. I've given you my necklace. I have nothing left to offer because she's a poor little Miller's, Miller's daughter, right? And he goes, okay, um, I want your firstborn, your firstborn child. And of course, she's desperate. So she goes, okay. And straw, gold. King comes in, very happy, marries the little girl. She gets, well, hopefully she's a young woman. Um, she uh, she gets pregnant with her full spoon, has her first child, thinks nothing of it, forgets about the little man, uh, the strange little man, until a year later, the strange little man arrives and goes, right, I'm here to collect. She goes, what? Remember our deal? You were going to give me your firstborn child. Of course, the young queen is now completely beside herself because there is no way she is going to give up her firstborn child to this strange little man. Lord knows what he's going to do with the, the, the little child. So she is just sobbing and pleading and saying, please don't take my child. He is going, no, 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 deal's a deal. She's going, please, 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 please give me a chance. I'll do anything. I'll do anything. I'll give you all the riches of the kingdom. Just please do not take my child. So he, funnily enough, he actually takes pity her on her and goes, hmm, Okay, I'll give you a chance. If you can guess my name in the next three days, then I will not take the child. Deal's off. She goes, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. So she spends all night writing out all these names. The next morning, the little the little man comes back and she goes through all the names and he goes, no, nope, none of those are mine. He skips away. Ha, ha, ha. So she sends out um, all of her servants and the staff from the palace to ask 
all the uh, the subjects in the land for names and they come back with this pile of names she goes through them with the little man no nah, none of those are my name either <laughs> so um the third night comes and she has sent out the staff again uh the the palace staff to go to, all across the land to find any obscure name that they can and in their travels one of the servants of the palace actually spies in the woods this strange little man dancing around this fire and he's singing a ditty now I can't remember what the ditty was but ultimately he goes my name is Rumpelstiltskin so on hearing this the servant races back, tells the young queen, and the young queen is like, oh, thank God, thank God, thank God. And um, the little man arrives and she starts to run through a certain number of names. Then she goes, Rumpelstiltskin. Well, he literally just about explodes with anger, has no idea how she figured out his name, and uh, kind of disappears, just disappears in a, a poof of anger. So, and she gets to keep the child. So why did I go through all that to tell you that story? Because I want you to think about this from the perspective of whatever your goal or vision is. I want you to put such a huge why behind it that if you do not achieve that goal or that dream, that it's like your the potential outcome is that somebody's going to take your firstborn child. So you need to be so obsessed with achieving your goal that you will do anything and everything within reason, of course. Please don't do anything illegal or do anything that hurts anybody. It's got to be for the highest good of everybody. But that you will go above and beyond. You will go to all lengths. You will focus and focus and focus. And you will keep failing your way forward until you reach that goal. It's not that I'll give it a shot. And if it doesn't work, then meh, I'm going to go back to my ordinary mediocre life. And I'm just going to live a life of, of, um, of uh, mediocrity and never achieve anything great. No, it needs to be like an obsession. So what is your why? And it needs to be something that the consequence for you of not achieving it is like, you're going to have to give up your firstborn. And I want you to think about that. If you have children, or if you want to ever want to have children, imagine that somebody came to you and said, right, you've got a month to um, give me $100,000 or I'm going to take away your firstborn child. Think about that. If somebody literally came to you and gave you that ultimatum, what would you do? What lengths would you go to to be able to find a way to create that $100,000? All of a sudden, your objections and all the stuff that says, I can't do it, pales into insignificance in the light of that threat, doesn't it? I want you to sit with that and what I mean by that. So all of a sudden, the threat far outweighs the I can't do it, it's not possible, you will find a way because the ultimate consequence is just too hard for you to bear. So for me personally, I can't relate to that because I don't have children in my life. Um, but I do have my fur babies who are just my whole world. And I can guarantee you, if somebody showed up my door tomorrow and said, you've got a month to make a million dollars or I'm taking one of your fur babies, oh, stand back, baby. There is no length that I would not go to to achieve that goal and that outcome to keep my fur babies safe. So I want you to really think about that. Set your goals, your dreams high. And then go all in, like your life depends on it, like somebody's going to come and take your firstborn if you don't achieve it, and then make it happen. Your goals and your dreams are achievable, but you have to go all in and make them happen. So I hope this has been uh, has helped you to put some context around your goals and your vision and what you need to do to achieve them. And I want you to put yourself in that space and sit down and think, this is my big goal. This is my big vision. What if somebody gave me this kind of ultimatum? What would I do? What would I be 
be willing to do that I'm not willing to do now. You'd get out of your comfort zone pretty damn quick, wouldn't you? Yeah, of course you would. You would face your fears. You would stare them down and you would be absolutely unstoppable in achieving your goal and dream. And that's what I want for you. I want you to be unstoppable at bringing your dreams to life and living your dream life. So if you have enjoyed this, then please remember to like and subscribe to the channel. And if you have not yet subscribed to the free eight tapping videos that are all about tapping for $100,000 in 30 days and go to the link that is on your screen right now. Make sure you join the community. They are eight powerful tapping videos that's going to help to rewire your brain for money, wealth, abundance, and success. And if you've enjoyed this video, then please comment below. Let me know what you think. How has this affected you? Has it transformed the way you view what you're going to do for your goals and dreams? I hope so because you deserve it. I'll see you in another video very soon. Ciao for now.